The first session I had in my D&D campaign was one of the most watched streams in the Dungeons and Dragons category. At the time I was playing, you know, I had like a little over a dozen viewers, but I was in the top three rows, the first row, second, then third, as the time went on. And, and I'm real proud of myself. I'm a real small streamer, and it, <laughs> for the first session, it was really good. Now, now, to be fair, I've definitely had more views in, in previous sessions, but I took a hiatus from uh, streaming D&D because I wanted to build the ultimate D&D campaign. Not only did I want to build the ultimate D&D campaign, I needed to have the, the ultimate players to have this D&D campaign. You see, a, a while back, when I first really started and, and really wanted to get into to streaming, I thought I should do some D&D stuff. I started with my friends and, you know, it was casual, it was kind of fun. There was, uh, you can go back and still see some of those videos of even my old apartment. But I quickly learned that Making content with friends is it, it, it's not it, it's not always the best the best thing to do you know they you know they just, just not the same mindset so I thought okay well I I need I need to have experience in these things so I went on a journey went on a trip I stopped doing D and D entirely and totally went out and just tried to be a streamer and it, it didn't my normal content creating stuff where I was learning as I was going along with it. With experience hitting opportunity, I was able to join an org, Titan Media Collective, where I met a bunch of other small streamers. Now, this isn't the first group of streamers that I've been part of. I was also part of another Discord where I got the chance to network with other streamers there. I'm kind of an introvert. I don't really want to step outside and, and, and go talk to people. I like, I like being at home and, and rolling dice and playing with my toys. But besides the point, the Titan Media Collective gave me an opportunity to network with other streamers uh, who had other things in mind, and, and I experimented at first. You know, just trying new things, seeing who was more active, seeing uh, who had, you know, charisma. All of this was my master plan. I mean, you gotta give me credit. I am a dungeon master. I play for the long game. I'm, I'm in it, I'm in it to win it. So, it wasn't long until I announced that I would be doing Project Odyssey. Now this, this was the start to my dream. I needed a campaign. That that was something I didn't have. I also needed players. Something I did have, but, but didn't really want my friends to be on stream. And thus, Project Odyssey was born. Now, what this initially was, was a way for me to do one shots, introduce uh, like-minded people, the streamers in Titan Media Collective, into uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons. Now, for those experienced in, in such uh, tabletop RPGs, you are all well-versed and, and know how addicting said games can be. If we already like video games, imagine a video game that has no borders. Well, little to none borders, where your imagination is basically the limitation behind everything you can do. It's kind of empowering and makes people want to do it some more. So here I was, setting up my series of one shots and recruiting people. I was doing anything I could, messaging anyone I would, taking days off from work, using my sick days, vacation days, whatever I had in order to make sure that my schedule was aligned with the people that wanted to, to set these sessions up. And really, it was an interview process. I didn't tell anyone this. I was the only one that was privy of this knowledge, but yeah, that's what it was. I was kind of scoping out some of the other streamers, seeing, okay, who vibes well with one another? Who vibes well with me? Who really wants to progress the story of the game? And who really can make this about entertaining an audience while also having having a genuine good time playing Dungeons and Dragons. And don't get me wrong, I had fun playing with absolutely everyone there. And there were people that had some really unique ways of playing the game that opened my eyes and I en enjoyed the experience of having done all that. And I wanted to continue it. However, <laughs> it is a pain. Now I did this for about six months and I cannot tell you the scheduling nightmare it is to wrangle in other streamers that do this part time, mind you, in, in, into getting them, into coercing them into playing Dungeons and Dragons. Because when, when you come up, like you can't just go up to someone and ask them to, to play a tabletop RPG with you. That's quite a commitment. 
If you know what I mean, and be like, hi, yeah, I, I, I'm playing this game. You know, usually it starts uh, once a week. We can play once a month, and and the end time is the foreseeable future. D that's a that's a big commitment. That's a hard sell, especially to someone who's never played the game before. So I offered my experience, <laughs> ten year DM, as no. Uh, a way to essentially open open the doors basically the gateway drug to most of these um inexperience these babies uh other streamers and <laughs> what do you know it worked after the first session i already had people telling me oh i'd love to play again and i was like yeah don't say but i wanted to make sure i had different people every time also i wanted to make this kind of liable for people to go back and watch it later i really wanted to try and see how could i set up my campaign for the future how can i actually make this liable and what this should look like and of course i stole i went and looked at other people's streams went and looked at other people's setup saw things that i liked saw things that i didn't like and I had to fit these these one shots within three hours, and they had to tell a story, a big uh, you know beginning, middle, and end, and and really it had to be something that was enjoyable. Now, each one of those streams, I did my best to pay attention. I had my mods pay attention, and I rewatched a lot of them. There are a lot of things that I didn't like, and I still don't like of of my habits that I do myself try to change. But I picked. A lot of things away from that. I gauged audience reaction, chat reaction. I gauged the, the players and, and how they felt about everything. And each stream was me taking it apart and making it better for the next one, as you should be, but also still continuing the interview process that was going on between each streamer because I try to have new streamers every time. Now, I did have a lot of people cancel on me or not be able to make it for personal reasons. I don't hold it against them. And I had people that definitely wanted to continue playing, but because I was, you know, working on my master plan to get a campaign rolling for myself, I was like, yeah, you know, I'll get you in eventually. And after it was all said and done, my personal channel, which I was streaming it on most of the time, which usually, you know, doesn't average that well. We're talking like two, three viewers is all of a sudden averaging 30 viewers every time I go live for Project Odyssey. Not only that, but I did find a star studded crew cast the works. Now, I did bring in one of my buddies who's also a streamer fabio the chicken i've played with him in the past he picks things up he likes to do things weird and he's kind of uh he's kind of a wild card when it when it comes to playing the game are these your possessions on your left side i point towards um the possessions and i uh quickly pickpocket he's... Are you quickly as he's distracted <laughs> And I enjoy that. He likes to take advantage of situations and he likes to put himself in the thick of it. As well as Fabernator, a good buddy of mine where we've become friends off camera as well. And we genuinely enjoy each other's company, but he's also very, very likes to know what's going on. He, he's, he's on the verge of being a rule lawyer, as in he wants all the information, he wants to be able to understand everything, and he wants to be able to put things forward. Now, I don't imagine we have time to walk around and just do what we please. It's okay. Forever. We're we're in an anime. You know, it's like gotcha, a Dragon gotcha, Ball gotcha, Z gotcha, episode. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> it's like well, because I also the spell's not meant to be like completely overpowered and broken. It's just like I'm, oh I've really? Then how did you minute, stop but... combat, huh, Mister? Mister, <laughs> well, I'm gonna yeah, go I mean, in here. They... I find this fantastic because rule lawyers have a great way of keeping DMs accountable. But I also know he's gonna keep up with all his stuff. I won't have to babysit him throughout the entirety of the campaign. And speaking of babysitting people we also have nate from two beards podcast now this guy is a veteran when it comes to the craft he's been playing dungeons and dragons for a long time he's seen every trope every trick matter of fact whenever i try to slide one under the rug he calls it tells it to the party members and i appreciate that i appreciate that because sometimes as a dm i spend time teaching my players a lesson about the game so that they can be more self-sufficient i don't need to do that with nate's involved he covers all his bases and he's kind of just he's kind of just sit back and he watches things from the sidelines and he puts in his input and he makes sure that the party stays safe and that we're always on the right track which i love we're, we're gonna do our best to try to save 
I mean, you you don't have to save them, <laughs> but there are people <laughs> in danger. You know, do it, do it, do what you do what you want to do. Oh, it's called collateral damage for a reason. There you go. There you go. I absolutely love. And finally, last but definitely not least is Ali over Allison. Now I've probably done more collaborations with Ali over Allison than anyone else. And just like favorite Aider, me and her have become friends as well off stream. And, and I definitely enjoy her camera work when it comes to the game. It really, she keeps up with the audience and she keeps up with the story. She's definitely one of those players that, that plays a character and and tries to help the dm out she pays attention to what's going on and she's always helping progress the story to the next portion to the next part and she goes along with what's what's happening she's great at slugging it out so if there's any obstacles that come in her way she kind of just goes with the flow and she's like water is beautiful i would like more <laughs> hp if i could have more we'll, we'll figure it out all right we'll figure it out just now you'll die <laughs> Maybe roll a new character and then, you know, we'll go from there. <laughs> that just means Edda's gonna see her sister die and run out and be like, you're all gonna die. It's great. There's little to no resistance to her. She, even though she advertises that she likes messing up my plans as a DM, she is definitely doing the opposite whenever she is a player and is one of the best things to have as a DM. And especially as a, as a D and D campaign that's acting more as a show than sitting down and playing. Now I, I wanted the fusion of the two. I definitely wanted it to be authentic. I didn't want anything to be scripted i wanted it to be mostly improvised and i wanted it to feel like and and really play like we were generally just a bunch of friends just sitting together rolling some dice and, and talking of doing some simple mathematics with one another and it came off a little bit too authentic for the first session but i do have to say so myself now there were mess ups, I forgot NPC names, I uh, stumbled in things, players showed up late, Fabio uh, told me the night before that he was going to show up and ended up, uh, you know, sleeping in in the morning, which I can't believe I almost forgot. We were doing our stream at 8am in the morning central time, my time, which is, which is crazy for me, so I kind of switched my whole normal schedule to fit that because I knew I wasn't going to wake up for that kind of stream. I And I think in partial, it helped me get on top of, of the D&D Dungeons and Dragons category, but Project Odyssey has always kind of been able to get on top of the Project Odyssey. <laughs> but Project Odyssey has always been able to get on top of the Dungeons and Dragons category. I do think it did contribute to us only having like a dozen viewers to the 30 viewers that we were having. I don't know. I, I haven't done enough experiments to, to figure out or cross reference. I don't have enough data yet to figure it out. All I know is I'm still on top, baby. Even though I essentially had to be ready by seven and, and start to talk to everyone, you, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a Dungeons and Dragons uh, game if nobody had really finished making their character. We had people, we had Ali. Uh, switching her subclass 30 minutes before the session started. We also had a uh, Fabernator and Nate. Uh, I think, actually, not Nate. I think it was Fabernator, Ali, and Fabio who didn't have their characters, uh, like pictures of them made. So I didn't even have a, a an icon for for them on camera where I try to put it at the, the little corner right over here. <laughs> It was, sometimes it felt like I was doing everything I could to, to keep everything together and everything just keep running smoothly. Uh, but at the same time, it was a lot of fun uh, experiencing and doing all that stuff. I've been streaming now for over a year. And uh, before those, those mess ups used to stress me out. But now it's like, oh, we got people running late. We got things not done. Let's delay the stream. I'm gonna delay the stream. 15 minutes before we get started where it's okay <laughs> and i'm having a good time doing it but it took me over six months to to do the interviewing and to get the the, the people that i want and to figure out kind of the formula and which uh, how to tell uh, uh the pacing of the story and make sure that it wasn't too slow for D, &D especially since we're only going to be playing once a month 
And in hindsight, I'm glad I, I took the extra time to experiment with Project Odyssey before I started the Burning Skies campaign. And I look forward to continuing this journey and to see what other fires and, and hazards pop up and to keep you guys updated. But I'll definitely be uh, posting summaries and stuff like that. And if you enjoyed the D&D campaigns or you just enjoy these videos, uh, give a like and a subscribe. It goes a long way for this channel. And I can't wait to see what uh, this this new this new adventure has for us. I've never done a campaign uh, to this magnitude ever as a, as a DM. So I'm excited. Until next time, play nice.